Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. The Red Shoes. This story is about a little girl. Karen. And she's really poor. And she's so poor that in summertime she had to run around barefoot because they she could, didn't have summer shoes. She did have shoes for the winter, but they were wooden like clogs. One day, a shoemaker's wife, because she didn't have shoes, a shoemaker's wife decided to make a pair of shoes. A shoemaker's wife made her a pair of shoes uh, out of cloth, and they were not very awesome. They were pretty clumsy, but they were red. And then the first time that she wore them was on the day that her mom died uh, at her funeral. The same day of the funeral. Okay, so there's this funeral, and it's and it's the little kid's mom's funeral. Oh, yes. And, and she, usually, um, you don't wear red shoes to a funeral. You don't. You, you know, it's, it's supposed to be black shoes. Yeah. I mean, you're supposed to wear black at a funeral. Uh, but this little girl, Karen, did anyways. They stood out, and everybody was kind of... Everybody looked at her. She's uh, wearing these red shoes, and everybody's looking down on her. Um for wearing them at a funeral. And then an old lady in a carriage, in an old carriage, comes by. And she's like, hey, here's this orphan kid now. Uh, she tells, asks the, cler- the clergyman, the uh, person handling the funeral operations. She's like, hey, I'll take the kid uh, and make sure that she's well taken care of. The clergyman's like, yeah, I don't... Carrie, you're not, she's not my kid. The girl, Karen, thought that the old lady wanted to take care of her because of her red shoes. She (laughs) stood out in the crowd and she's like, ah, amongst these dark, morbid people, there's this little girl that has red shoes. I'll take her. She's mine. So the uh, old lady takes her. It wasn't about the shoes. It was, was not about that at all. Uh, because she took the shoes and she burned them. She, she torched them. She threw them in a fire. And a uh, old lady taught her how to dress well. Bought her new clothes. And they taught her how to sew. And then everybody said that she was pretty. Uh, but she had a mirror that would tell her that she's beautiful. Yeah, that she's not pretty. She's beautiful. And then one day, the queen and the princess come to town. So... They, and, they come to town, and everyone gawks over them and runs to them, and so so does Karen. And, and the princess is, like, on display, She and she likes it. And she's just standing up there and just waving at everyone. She's wearing a white dress, and she's wearing red shoes. Red Morocco shoes. and But she's not wearing a crown or a veil or, right. a, tr- or a train. Oh, and then she becomes of age for her first... Confirmation. That's basically a baptism. Now that she's of age, this old, the old lady takes her to pick out new clothes and new shoes for her big day. Her big day. It's like a quinceanera. They walk to the shoemaker's place, and there's all these glass cases filled with shoes. And she sees these red shoes in a glass case. That were very similar to Yeah, those. to the ones that the princess wore. And it turns out that these shoes were actually made for a count's daughter. So she was lucky enough to have worn the size that they made for that lower middle class <laughs> royal guy's daughter. She bought these shoes. And the old lady wouldn't have approved this had she been able to see very well. She could only tell that they were shiny. She was like, are these like some fancy leather or something? And Karen was like, yeah, they are. They're just fancy leather. (laughs) They're not. They're not red. (laughs) Because you shouldn't wear red shoes to your baptism. Just like you shouldn't wear red shoes to a funeral. Uh, So... She got him, and she wore him to the baptism, and she, it, 
it just distracted her from like paying attention to anything that that the mm-hmm. pastor was saying as she was being baptized and she was just kind of like focusing all of her thoughts and energy on those shoes everyone was looking at her shoes and yeah. she even thought that like the people in the paintings on the wall were yeah. looking at her shoes and, and like the statues. statues the monuments the old lady had heard from everyone everyone everybody told her that Karen's shoes were red. They were concerned because you don't wear red shoes to church. So the, the old lady gets mad at Karen and she was like, you naughty girl, you naughty girl, you're not supposed to wear red to church. From now on, you wear your black ones to church, even if they're your old ones. They go home after church and she puts the shoes away. Next Sunday, which is when you go to church, <laughs> in case Thanks. you didn't know, it was the Holy Communion. She went over to look to get her shoes on, and she stared at her red, red shoes. Ones. Then she stared at the black ones. And then she stared at the red ones again so much so that she put them on. She puts the red shoes on. They go to church. But they walk down a dusty footpath. When they get to the church, there's an old uh, crippled soldier, uh, and he has a big white beard with some red in it. It was very red. And he's like, can I, can I uh, wipe your shoes? He's asking the old lady. And then the little girl sticks her foot out. Got crutches on and he bends down and he's like, well, oh, wow, those are some lovely dancing shoes. Well, I'll be. Those are some lovely dancing <laughs> shoes. He, he looks at him and, and he, he uh, touches the sole of each one. He like talks to the shoes. He told the shoes, never stop dancing. Don't ever come off when you start your dancing. Cursed her shoes and then she goes to church. And Everyone's staring at her shoes again, and even the posters and statues. And then she's so mesmerized by them, she didn't say the Lord's Prayer. Then she comes out of the church after not getting anything from it. And the and she goes to climb into the carriage. The old lady climbs into the carriage. She's going to climb into the carriage and the coachman's going to take him back home. Uh, but the old soldier man's there again. He's like, you got your dancing shoes on, don't you? And then she got felt compelled to start dancing. She had to start dancing so much so that she danced around the corner and the coachman had to run after her and pick her up and put her in the carriage. She no. kept dancing and then she oh, kicked yeah. oh, her yeah. the She's old lady. And then she took him off. She goes home and she puts him in a, uh, away in a cupboard. So she's mesmerized by the shoes and she just watches them. She just looks at them. And then one day, the old lady... She was sick so much so that she needed um, constant nursing and care. She was bedridden, so Mm -hmm. she needed somebody to take care of her. And it was Karen's responsibility at that point because she'd taken care of her for her whole life. Mm -hmm. The little country town was having a ball, and Karen got invited. Yeah. And so Karen looks at this old lady and thinks, well, she's dying, so... There's nothing I can do. I might as well go to the ball. So she goes to the ball, and she wears those shoes. And then she starts dancing, but then the shoes take take over, over. and she feels like she doesn't have control over it because she tries to go right, and the shoes go left, and she tries to go up, and the shoes go down, and went backward all the way out of the church. Dance out of the church, and then onto the street, and she's still dancing. She's doing jigs and different types of dance moves. She's probably moonwalking at some point. Then she gets into the forest, she sees light within the forest, and she th- thought that it was the moon because it had a face. But uh, she found that the face was the old soldier boy. He's like, those are lovely dancing shoes. She gets She's, scared, and she dances away from him. She just keeps dancing. Over the fields and the valleys, and she dances over a graveyard. Dance. But the dead don't dance. And, like, she wanted to sit on a pauper's grave. Do a you... pauper? A pauper's a poor man. So uh, she wanted to go sit there, but... She would have no peace. Dances back to the church, and then there's this angel guarding the doors, and he's got these big wings. and Angel mm-hmm. of God, as she refers and to And he him. has a sword. And he's got a big, broad sword. And he says, Dance you shall, dance in your red shoes till you are pale and cold, till your skin shrivels up and you are a skeleton. Dance you shall from door to door and wear proud and wicked children live. You shall knock so that they may hear you and fear you. Dance you shall dance. She dances out and she dances far and wide into forests and valleys and caverns. And highways and and byways. (laughs) In ways and upways and outways. And she dances over thorns and tree stumps and bashes up her feet. 
her yeah her legs and then she passes the, the her old house mm-hmm. where the old lady was she left behind and she was dead and they were singing hymnals saw the coffin come out and, so and she, she was just dancing to... she's like everybody must have forsaken me she dances and she dances into the woods where this isolated little house is that she knew was the house of an executioner. Mm-hmm. And she taps on the window and she says something like, "My, I can't stop dancing, so you're going to have to come out to me. And then the executioner comes out and is like, you know what I do, right? I like chop people's heads off. When they're bad. And my axe is itching for another kill. She's like, don't chop off my head because then I couldn't repent. I need to repent for what I've done, but I need to use my mouth for that. So don't chop off my head, chop off my feet, because that's the problem, and then I'll be forgiven. The dude's like, all right, this this is kind of weird. I normally don't chop off feet, but I'll do it. And he's going to chop off her feet, and then he does, and then the feet hop off of the chopping block, and they're still dancing. So now there's feet running around. And then he builds her feet and crutches out of wood. So he's a cool guy. And then he also teaches her a song that prisoners would sing when they were sorry for what they had done. Uh, Like when they're telling God they're sorry. Now she can walk, so she doesn't have to dance anymore. So she's walking on some wooden feet. She goes to the church because she's like, I can go and repent. I can go and confess now. She goes to the church. And she sees her feet in the shoes, and they're dancing. Oh, that's right. And she gets scared, and she, like, runs off crying. She goes somewhere else, and she cries, and she cries. And For a whole week, she cries. And then next Sunday, she's hoping to go yeah. to church. She goes to the church. She's like, I've, I've given enough. I should be forgiven. I should be able to go into church and, and prove that I've paid my my sacrifice for my wrongdoings. So she goes to the church again and the feet are there and scare her off. So she goes to the pastor and she's like, can I stay with you? or Work me as a servant. Yeah, and then the pastor's wife took pity on her and took her in. She would just listen to the Bible stories they told at the house. And the children at the house when they would talk about... Frills and frivolos. Like shoes and, and beauty. So she would uh, kind of like shake her head and be disappointed mm-hmm. to hear the kids talk about that stuff because she's gone through, through so much with that kind of mentality. And then one Sunday, they ask her if she would go to church with them, and she was sad. She was sad. She stayed in a tiny little room. Like Only her, has a bed and a chair. And, and she gets up in her room, and she reads her psalms and she hears she the organ from the church and she pleads out she asks God to help her and mm. then boom angel pops in but this time he doesn't have a sword he's got like a beautiful green branch this branch is magic and it makes all the walls and ceiling expand and they expand into the church almost like the church came into the room or vice versa and the pastor said uh thanks for coming it was, it's good you, to see it's good that you're you, here you made the right choice yeah and she said it was god's mercy yeah. and uh she sat in the pew the warm sunlight hits her her spot in the pew where she was sitting and fills her heart with so much love and joy and everything that her heart bursts and she goes to heaven and no one in heaven asks her about red shoes the end. To close the chapter on this episode until we meet again. And so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.